Hello and welcome to the Springfield Training Podcast. I'm Dom and welcome to our first ever episode. We wanted to do this podcast so that we can bring you interviews and insights into work-based learning and the skills that you can gain from doing an apprenticeship or just your general job. What apprenticeships are and how they can be good for the individual and a business and we're also going to talk about career development. So today's guest is Tom but before he introduces himself in a little bit we're just going to go upstairs in our office and we've got a ping pong table. We're going to play a little bit of ping pong just to loosen up and just have a bit of a chat before we start. You get chicken and bacon, yeah. Chicken and stuffing, I think. Oh, and chicken salad. Chicken salad, I think, yeah. Nice. And then I get a smoothie. Obviously. Higher price. Yeah. We're hoping to bring you a different guest every month, which could be some of our apprentices that we have here or employers as well as our guest today, which is Tom. Tom is the owner of Splice, Splicing Block. <laughs> no one can say that. Tom is the owner of Splicing Block Podcasts. What is it that you do, Tom? Podcasts are my job. They're, uh, they're my passion and they're my job. Like I managed to make it into a career. So, yes, I, I record audio, I edit audio, I put audio out. And the thing that everyone wants in the audio field at the moment is podcasts. They're, you know, they've been a buzzword for a while. And yeah. still, me and Don were talking about before, like, they're more popular now than they've ever been. So yeah, definitely. the majority of my, my career, my, my work is making, producing and putting out podcasts and all the things that that entails. So Tom's here because he provided us with the equipment to record the podcast today. And I thought it'd be a good idea to have him on because I don't know how to use any of it. So we spent the morning going through all that and then here we are making the first one. Nice. Yes, yeah, pleasure. I'm honoured. Honoured to be your first guest. We know what you do now. So what actually got you interested in this line of work? Well, I've always been into sound and I suppose it was music before anything else. I did music all the way through school. I always played in bands and things like that and recorded our recorded our stuff. You know, it was on it was on cassette tapes when I was little. <laughs> It's a good job it's audio, you can't see how old I am. But yeah, <laughs> cassette tapes and then I kind of got into making music on computers. I did music at university and I'd never really done any audio recording that wasn't music until maybe seven or eight years ago. Yeah. I was a big, big podcast fan. Like I've been into them for maybe 10 years now, something yeah. like that before most people knew what they were. I'm not saying that to be like, I was here first, I'm cool than <laughs> knew, but yeah, I've been listening to him for a long time then. I thought, I know how to record voices. I record singers, I record musicians, I can make things sound good. And I love podcasts. It seems like a bit of a no brainer to, to start doing them. And I, I got into it through recording a few of my mates to just like, you know, messing about. And they were, they were always kind of comedy, comedy centric ones. And um, I thought, why why don't I try making this into a career? And, you know, I got hooked up with a few people that were well-connected and it, it grew from there. Like, you know, I, I was the first one that I, was, that I did professionally that was made me think it's going to become a job, a viable career path is one called the Two Shot Podcast, which is about acting. It's with a well-known actor who is well connected in the acting circles and he could pull in guests from all over the shop and just have a chat to them about their careers and how they got into it and we started doing that about five years ago now four or five years ago and we got a lot of listeners because of the quality of the guests that we were getting on and I, that that was what made me think like people want to listen to this you know you can you can go and do these for other people because a lot of people want to make them but don't know how yeah, and, and that's how, that's why you're here today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, doing training and stuff like that. I forgot to mention that is that's part of my job as well. Yeah, and I love getting people's ideas off the ground and out into the open world and getting people to to hear those ideas. So yeah, yeah that's me. So you mentioned that you've been listening to podcasts for over ten years. I and we spoke about all that this morning that I've only started listening in recent weeks because I knew I was starting one. Yeah, what do you? think is the best podcast out there bit of a random question 
It is, it is. And it changes on a weekly basis, I think. Yeah. The one that I keep going back to time and time again is one called The Blind Boy Podcast, which is an Irish... He was a musician, actually, this guy called Blind Boy. He's a bit of a weirdo. He wears a plastic bag on his head. <laughs> and it's an odd podcast in that he never... Well, he rarely gets guests on. For the first two years, he didn't get guests on. It was just him and a microphone, which is a very brave thing to do. Yeah. Not many people can just talk into a mic it's, and make it... It's difficult to just do it by yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Like, having someone to bounce ideas off is... I won't be able to do it anyway. But he does this podcast where he'll do hot takes on particular subjects and, like so different lines of thought and philosophy and stuff together with um issues that are relevant to everyone you know that are going on at the moment like you might do one about coronavirus or mental health during the coronavirus or yeah. and i just find his voice he's from the west coast of ireland he's got an amazing accent and he has really good subtle sound design just really like nice lilting background piano music and I just find the things that he talks about resonate well with me and I'm in awe that he can do a weekly podcast that's just him speaking and make it interesting to me. So I think, although I've got a lot of other favourites that come and go, I think that's probably been the one over the last three or four years that I keep going back to. Nice. That might be one that I listen to in the future. Yeah, it's worth a go. I mean, what's your, what's your favourite at the moment? So I've been listening to jack mates happy hour recently um he gets a lot of youtubers on and i watch a lot of youtube yeah myself anyway same. so all the youtubes he's had on are people that i watch so yeah. i don't know if you've heard of the sidemen uh maybe i have what do they do on they, youtube they 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 have a feature now which is called sidemen sunday so every right. sunday they do a video it's different every week um but they've all got their own channels as well so i've watched all their channels and the sidemen yeah um have you heard of ksi yeah, yeah, yeah. Of of boxing fame. Yeah, he's British, isn't he? He is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's one that I watched at the very start. So I watched him all the way through, and now he's doing music. Yeah. And stuff like that, boxing. And he was on Jack Mate's podcast as well as a guest, it, was he? He was, I think, last year at some point. And as like a YouTube fan, does Jack Mate talk through what it's what being a YouTuber is about, or is it a bit more broad than that? No, he, he gets it right into detail about everything. Um he wants everyone's life story basically yeah yeah which is which is good for a podcast i suppose absolutely so that's what interests me yeah yeah well, we went off on a bit of a tangent there sorry um what is one thing that you wish you had known when you begun your career before i was a podcaster i was a teacher well saved so <laughs> the entire podcasting set there saved it though um yeah i was a teacher before i was doing this which i hated so i guess you mean the start of my current career the as a podcast career yeah but what why did you hate teaching why did i hate teaching just sick of kids they're awful <laughs> i'm not real i'm joking i don't it's know not joking. you are sorry <laughs> i said you're not joking <laughs> <laughs> it's it was hard just i don't know i didn't didn't feel i was particularly good at it i'm not a natural disciplinarian so, i'd be the same I, I wouldn't like to go into teaching yeah it's a tough gig like i think you have to be really dedicated to it and i didn't feel dedicated to it. I yeah. wasn't passionate enough about it to do the good enough job that, you know, you need to do to be one, to enjoy what you do and see the results yeah. and two, to kind of that the kids deserve. So yeah, this is, this career feels like my career now. I'm 34 years old and I've been doing this for five or six years and it's, I kind of feel like I've only, you know, only just started out on it basically. Yeah. So one thing that I wish I'd known, I suppose over the last year and a half, I've got into the visual side of content production more. I bought, I, I always took pictures and videos of the podcasts that I was recording on my phone. Yeah. But only this last year, I bought a nice camera, bought a Sony A7 III and a couple of nice lenses. Um, and I've started doing a little bit more video -y stuff, not necessarily as a video podcast, although that is something that I've kind of done as well, yeah. but just creating content alongside the audio that I'm recording. And when I look back at the pictures and the videos, which I only kind of took sporadically when I first started doing it, I just wish that I'd got more into the visual side of it yeah. longer ago because 
it's all about having assets to share on your social media channels and stuff like that. And, and video and photos are obviously the, the major ones that people click on and get, you know, the, the um, what's the word, the engagement yep. that, that you need to make your audio podcasts reach the ears of people. So, yeah. So, yeah. So that's my main job is social media. Yeah. Mainly. So when I put this podcast out, it's my job to get people listening to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have any tips on that? I do, yeah. I mean, one is take pictures and videos while you're doing it. You know, yeah. I know you've got a million and one things to think about when you're doing it. But yeah, get as much kind of visual content as you can to accompany it. It can be asking guests to send them like a, a headshot or something like that through at the end that you can use as an image to accompany the podcast. It can be getting them to do a little piece to camera saying... I'm a guest this week on the such and such podcast. So you've got that to share on yours or you can ask them to share it on their channels. Yeah. And then in terms of like sharing snippets from the audio podcast itself, there's a really good app called Headliner. It's like a web based, there's a web based version and a, a, a phone OS version Yeah. where you can select like a minute or a couple of minute clip out of your audio podcast put a picture behind it and it comes up with a little wavy waveform over the top of it and kind of within five minutes you've generated um, a social media asset that you know you, th you think exemplifies the tone of your podcast what the what the rest of it's about and if people like that you know they might click through and listen to the whole thing so pictures headliner app and yeah getting the the guests to generate content i think as well i think sorry yeah i think getting guests on is imperative as well you know because yeah. it just it grows your reach to their audience and if you retain even one or two percent of the listeners that have listened to that particular guest because they like your podcast that's massive you know you can really build yeah. your audience like that definitely we were talking earlier weren't we about doing podcasts in person rather than virtually mm -hmm. why do you think that is important well i mean i'm a bit of an audio nerd so getting the best quality audio i think is really important you know you've if, if someone's listening to your podcast for the first time and the audio quality is only that of a you know a headset around someone's neck or, and it's gone through zoom and been compressed and it sounds kind of like not good you know people turn off podcasts despite them having really good content because yeah. the audio is not good enough if you can't listen to it on a noisy bus or when you're driving in your car or you know, any of the other noisy environments that we're in, people aren't, aren't going to pay it, the attention it deserves. So I think that's important. And from a personal point of view, I think the tiny delays that you get on Zoom, you know, if people's internet connection are bad, it just makes people speak unnaturally a little bit. You've got to wait your turn in a conversation and the lag just makes it a little bit unnatural. Yeah. And, you know, the last year I've been doing predominantly Zoom audio. Yeah. Well, we've not really had a choice. But... No, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, so I've been doing that and I can hear when it's recorded over the internet. People like, do, they laugh differently and they react differently to different people, so. Because sometimes there's a delay between what you've said, so. Yeah. You might think someone's not laughed at you. Yeah. And then it comes through two minutes later, you're like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then it's, it stops you in your tracks and it's just awkward, isn't it? I yeah. think, you know, as we get sick internet connections and 5G rolls out, then maybe there won't be as those latency issues and the, the, um, the same compression issues and um, one day we might be able to do a perfectly good podcast over the internet but i think for the time being it's you know it, it's it's a necessity as we are at the moment but it's not the ideal yeah yeah so going back to how you began your career mm. did you um take any sort of route into music did you do an apprenticeship did you go to university yeah, yeah. I mean, I did music at school, GCSE and A-level and stuff like that. And then I did music at university. Um, but that was very academic. The, the university stuff was very academic, like music and politics, music and philosophy and some bits of composition and stuff like that. But there was one module that I did, like music and technology, where they basically taught us how to use a, a DAW, which is a digital audio workstation, basically making music on a computer and they taught me a little bit on that and the course tutor was ace really really good but there wasn't many people on my course that kind of took to doing it they were just doing what they did in lessons and i spent my entire student loan that i got on a macbook and i got 
Logic Pro on it, which is a music making program. Is that this MacBook? Uh, no, this, this, I've had a couple since then. Oh. This uh, this was, I think it was a G4 like laptop. So it was a decent one at the time. Probably be, you know, unusable by the, <laughs> but I flogged it. Like, you know, the fan was yeah. screaming after a few years because <laughs> I'd used it that much. But yeah, buying my own laptop and doing the stuff on my own was where I really got into recording and um, editing and that although my university career was brilliant it was the practical side of me doing it on my own like i learn best from youtube videos and and from doing things that's my learning style and i just felt like what i was learning at university was not practical enough for me to get the skills and to absorb the skills enough for me to use them yeah had it been something a bit more like apprenticeship based where i was going around with someone who was doing these things i think i would have learned a lot quicker but i think it's the for me it's the doing of things that makes me learn yeah and and yeah when i started doing it myself basically is what i'm saying was that the question it was the question was did you consider doing an apprenticeship well no didn't have a clue I didn't even know that, I don't know if there are apprenticeships in this particular line of work. A lot of people that do podcasts come from a radio background and I've never done any of that. So I guess radio apprenticeships would be a really good way into doing it. You, you're out and you're, you're learning on the job then. But no, it's probably something you could fill me in on a little bit. Like I know you do education, education-y stuff and like saying it was mechanical uh, engineering, engineering, business, stuff. uh, childcare and things like that. We don't do music though, No, but I'm sure there are music apprenticeships out there. Yeah. Yeah. I guess working in studios and stuff like that, would give you the skill set that you need to do this kind of thing. But yeah, I was very DIY. Yeah. But if I was going to choose a route to get into audio recording, it'd probably be the radio side of things. You seem to learn a lot and quickly doing that. Yeah. So yeah, that, that might be something for people to explore if they're interested. Yeah, definitely. What advice would you give someone wanting to pursue a career similar to yours? So, yeah. the, so the podcast route more than the music route? Yeah. Well, I'd just say DIY it, like make things. When I was little, I remember recording on cassettes again, like doing pretend radio stations and stuff like that. And you can watch, you can, you can learn and read about things and go on forums and stuff. But until you start doing one, like you, you probably... I've had a little look at how to make podcasts online, but I presume that doing one this morning is like, once you're doing it, you're thinking, I can do podcasts. Like, yeah. no matter how, how good or bad it is, your first iteration is the fact that you've done it and then you move on from it and do your next one. You're just going to learn step by step by step. So yeah, I think, yeah, just being proactive and, and, and making it happen is the most important thing. And if it's terrible, then make, you, make sure your next one isn't yeah. kind of thing. Like... I know that no one listens to the podcasts that I were the first ones that I ever made now. So like, you don't have to have too much of a, a quality filter on there. Just stick it out. And if it sticks, then cool. If not, move on. Yeah. Well, while we're on that topic, we've been going nearly 20 minutes now on this. And I already feel more comfortable than when we first started. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so... yeah, the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll be. And it's the same with anything new, isn't it? Yeah scary times yeah one question i did want to ask you is have you created a jingle or helped someone with a podcast that's famous yeah i mean jingles are something i really really enjoy doing as i said before i'm from a music background and i love it when people i've never been a songwriter as such like i used to make beats and stuff on my computer but i've never been able to write songs but when someone comes to me I need something doing to a brief. That's what I love doing. Especially if they come to me with a piece of music and say, I like this piece of music. Can you make something that sounds like this that I can use? That's, you know, when I've got a really strict sequence of things that I've got to stick to, I can I can do that really yeah. well. So most of the podcasts that I put out, well, maybe not most, but maybe half the podcasts that I put out, I've done the jingle for. I'm connected with a lot of musicians that I can call on. If I don't feel like I've got the skill set to do a particular jingle, I can get someone else to do it and then I can cut it down into beds and stings and layers and stuff like that and make a kind of whole sonic palette for a podcast to use. Yeah. So yeah, I do I do, do a lot of jingles. Like 
the podcast that I would I mentioned before, the Two Shot podcast, me and a band mem one of one of the people who were in one of the bands that I play with made that that theme tune. I do a podcast for Aurelia magazine, and I played a piano piece for their theme tune, which seems to have gone down really well. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I love I love it, and I love putting my kind of sonic imprint fingerprint on on a podcast as well yeah. so yeah and what was the other part of the question have you helped with a podcast for anyone famous so yeah can we get a name drop tons i'll, I'll drop names all day if you have one so <laughs> um so i know you're a leeds united fan i am a um, big leeds united fan i do a podcast called giant which is a spotify originals podcast yeah i can't take credit for it really but i, w I do a lot of work on it it's by a, a football magazine called mundial yeah, I've um, heard of that, yeah. It's really, really, like, Giant's well worth a listen. I've I've recorded for maybe six or seven different episodes, and they're all very different and all really, really good. But one of them was with Luke Ayling, who's the... Is he club captain at Leeds? It, yeah. He's, he, um, he's usually the captain when he's on, he, isn't he, I think? Mine's gone blank now. Yeah. But he does wear the armband sometimes. Yeah. And he's come up with Leeds through the divisions, like... And what one of the stories that we did for giant was going recording him at leeds training ground and hearing all about his stories a fascinating fella really like amazing to listen to i don't he's got a, he had a terrible stutter when he was younger i don't yeah. know if you know knew about that no no so we kind of talked through him to be a football captain you've got to have a certain way with words and be commanding and stuff like that so yeah. to hear him kind of overcoming that element um was really really interesting so yeah i mean he's if you're a leeds fan he's a he's a big name isn't he yeah that is a um, name drop <laughs> that's a good good name drop like the biggest one we've ever had on our two shot podcast the acting one was nicole kidman which we did before christmas who's wow. like global mega star of like the last 20 years yeah. so that's a a big name drop clang for you for me personally like I do another one called, I record one called the High Performance Podcast, which is Jake Humphrey off oh, yeah. the telly, off the yeah. football. And he speaks, and, and Damien Hughes, who's um, a sports psychologist and like high performance coach. Yeah. And that's a really interesting podcast. They get a lot of interesting guests on. Um, but I'm a Manchester United fan. And one of the things we, we recorded, Phil Neville, the United Hotel in Manchester. Yeah. We recorded Rio Ferdinand at his restaurant in Manchester. Yeah. And these are all like my childhood heroes. And then we went we did Oli Solskjaer at the at the training ground, at United's training ground. So, you know, going in there, setting up with him and then hearing him speak for an hour was like you Was know, he nice? Yeah. He seems like a nice guy. Lovely man. Amazingly nice. And like signed me nephew's little six month old united kit for him and stuff like that so that was that was pretty mad you know yeah. i'm i'm pretty decent at dealing with celebrities now because i've done it for the last four or five years yeah f from doing the podcasting thing so like but Solskjaer and rio ferdinand probably were the two that i was like oh my god these are like you know when it's a hero from when you're little it's different to someone you've come across a bit later on so yeah yeah i suppose they're the most well-placed ones that I can mention. I feel well, guilty for dropping all those names now. No, it's a terrible, no. terrible thing to do. No, I don't it? know what to say. I'm not saying that I'm friends with him, but I've, re <laughs> I've recorded him. Well, maybe we can try and get Luke Ailing on this podcast. I'll hook you up, mate. So the next question I want to ask you is, it's a question I'm going to ask everyone at the end of every podcast. So we are coming to the end, sadly. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? I like the outdoors and... I like going camping, I like going hiking, and I like going climbing, rock climbing. And um, it's very much a departure from what I do at the moment. But I'd say if I wanted, I only started doing rock climbing when I was about 23, 24. And when I go to the climbing wall now and I see the little kids who are seven and eight years old, I start thinking if I'd have started doing rock climbing then, because I'm good at it now. Like my body, I weigh nothing. I've got long arms, like so. I'm all right at climbing, but I always think like if I'd have um, got into it early and really dedicated, I'd love to have a career as a professional rock climber. Have you yeah. ever been rock climbing? I haven't. No, I've been to places like Brimham Rocks and stuff like that, and done it by yourself, but never like 
with the harness and that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's so much, it's really popular at the moment and the numbers of people getting into it means that professional careers like sponsorship deals and stuff like that yeah. are a possibility for people. And being able to make a living doing that kind of thing and dedicate yourself to being an athlete like i've always done sports all my life like playing football and cricket and stuff when i was little and i was yeah. n i was all right at them like i got in the teams and stuff like that but i was never one of the better ones in the teams but climbing i always think is like one of the things that my body shape and my mindset is naturally lends itself to but i didn't start early enough basically yeah. i only got into it later so i think yeah if i had to pick one at the moment it'd be that lovely i think that is about it so I'd like to say thank you, Tom, for coming in and helping me set all this up because I had no idea pleasure. what was going on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Stuff. Top podcasting. Enjoy, yeah. Enjoyed it. Right, yeah, nice one for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Well, I won't. He won't. <laughs> I will. Thank you for listening to the Springfield Training Podcast. We'd appreciate if you could like and subscribe to our channel. There's going to be loads of podcasts coming up this year. I'll leave a link to all social channels in the description as well. Thank you.